Right, so a lot of people who watched my previous video did not know what the bloody hell was going on. So in this one, I'll be narrating over it and hopefully explain some of the processes. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the page there's five different social media icons. Clicking on one of those should, notice how I said should, take you to the relevant profile. However, I am about as useless as a no-handed wicketkeeper when it comes to technology, so don't rely on that. It might just be there for decorative purposes by the end of this. So anyway, I'm going to stop blabbering and start explaining what's going on here. So this particular process caught a few people out last week because they didn't know what it was. This is the doors of the cabinet at the moment, so the walnut that you see me gluing onto the edge of the MDF is lipping, so that will be covered with veneer afterwards. And the reason I'm making them out of MDF as opposed to solid walnut is just to stop movement basically. Wood moves over time and I've got very little leeway in terms of the space around the doors. So making it out of MDF instead will basically eradicate all movement and hopefully allow the gap to stay consistent for the life of the cabinet. Well that's what we hope for anyway. So I got both doors lipped on the inside curve and then set to work cutting them flush which is here, yes. So I cut it as close as possible to the edge of the MDF to minimise work later and then planed it flush with the face only roughly because I can deal with that later. and then plane the edge flush. And then once it was roughly planed flat with a block plane, I could smash it through the speed sander. The advantage of doing this is because I'm veneering all these doors later, it takes them all down to exactly the same thickness so they can all be pressed at the same time. And while I've got nothing to talk about at this point, it's worth mentioning that those components with the curves on them will also have an external curve cut as well. I'm just keeping it square for now to help with clamping later on, which you can conveniently see here. So I'm just lining it up with my full size scale drawing to see if I've done everything correctly and not made any major cock ups along the line. So inside the door frame, there is a solid copper panel or two solid copper panels actually. And here I'm just routing the groove on the router table with a 1.5mm bit if I remember correctly. And it's cutting at about a 12mm depth running off a bearing. So with all the grooves routed I could start laying out for the domino joints. So I'm just squaring a line across on each of the faces and drawing an arrow to make sure I actually do it the right way because I've done that quite a few times where I end up dominoing the wrong side or the wrong way up or just basically every way you can possibly cock up I've done it. So I now draw these arrows to make sure I'm going to do it correctly. So then I rather aggressively clamp the piece down and using the Festool DF500 I cut 4mm domino slots. And having arrows there stops me doing it the wrong way round, which is always lovely. And there is the result. A small 4mm slot that I can insert a domino into and easily assemble the frame together. Or two frames for that matter. So I also got my constructional veneer this week, which was from Monday Veneers bit of a hit on the wallet at 270 quid but it is very good quality really nice and consistent so you can't really complain so I'm just cross cutting it all to rough lengths here before laminating and then cutting it down to rough width so it'll actually fit on my laminate formers And then I got really sidetracked, so Zach and I started making a cake. No, I wish it was cake, I was actually really hungry at this point. But we were actually just pigmenting the cascomite to make it match the colour of the wood better. Because cascomite tends to show up with white lines on the edge of the laminations once it's all glued together. And it would look a bit unsightly against the dark walnut once it's finished. 
So then after we were done getting glue between all the layers, we actually ran out of cascomite halfway through, so that was a bit scary. We popped it over the laminate former, getting it the wrong way around the first time, as you can see here. So I'll just detract your attention away from that to the little advertisement in the corner for Zach's Instagram. He makes some very nice stuff, I must say. So then we shoved it in the vacuum bag, got it all organised and flat and all the fun stuff. Zach closed it up for me which I didn't ask him to, and I got accused of him doing all the work here. <laughs> then I popped the little nozzle on and watched the magic happen. So you can see the last bit of air leaving now, and then you get full atmospheric pressure pushing down on the workpiece. Love that phrase. Also, that's Alice helping. There's her Instagram in the corner. It's probably worth mentioning. You get a few pictures of furniture, mostly selfies, but, you know, it's better than nothing. And that's it. Full pressure, fully pushed down on the former, and seven hours later, you get that. So then I started playing in one edge straight and square. You can do it on the planer, but in all honesty, I was quite scared. That's like 50 quid's worth of material there, and I didn't really want to be toying around with it. It's also quite fun doing it by hand. So I just checked it for square as I went along, got rid of most of the material with the block plane, and then moved on to the number 7, which I don't get to use often enough. I absolutely love it. Put a bit of candle wax on the bottom and you're away. And then finally onto the number 4, just to get into all the little divots here and there. And then here I'm just checking the face is actually square to the side using the planar bed as a reference surface. All this bit is fun. So I used that flat edge that I just created on the fence of the bandsaw and then cut it, I think it was about three millimeters over the finished width. So then I had room to thickness sand it later on. And that will be continued into the next week. Overall I had to do that whole process with four components. So I now have the carcass around the doors and the carcass around the external shelves. So thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully this episode has been slightly more informative than my last one. And as I said before, if you're viewing this in a YouTube browser, you should be able to click any of the social media links below. So following me on those would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much.